OMG, am I back? I am. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. I hope it is welcome back to my channel. Um, for those of you that do not know me, my name is Miata Ade Lavale. I'm an actress here in Los Angeles. You may have seen me in such commercials as Drive Time. Do you need a car? Oh, yes. Well, with Drive Time, you can save money on your down payment, like $1,000 on average. I'm more like too much stuff, not enough space, and no time to deal with it. Look no further than clutter. Maybe even. So celebrating Oktoberfest with new gourmet sausages. Quarter pound, quarter pound, gourmet sausages. I don't know. I don't know where y'all have seen me before. Maybe you've never seen me before. Maybe that's a good thing because the rest of y'all have been stalked by me on Hulu. Those commercials play all the damn time. As I said, welcome back to my channel, you guys. Um, it's been like two months. <laughs> It's been like two months because I needed a break. For those of you that don't know, the last thing that I did was Bridgerton. I did a review on that. I did it very quickly and it nearly killed me. It almost took me the fuck out. So I was tired. A bitch was tired. She needed a break after that shit. But basically, as soon as the dates for Shadow and Bone were announced, I knew right away that that is what I wanted to do. Um, my relationship with this, um, I actually read it probably several years after most of you guys read it. I think I read it for the first time, maybe 2016 or so. And um, I don't normally read a lot of YA because ugh, a bitch is too old. Um, but it had come recommended by other two old bitches. And I read it and it just was so fucking amazing. So when it was announced that they were gonna be doing this on Netflix, I was excited. And when we finally got those dates, April 23rd, I am so excited to watch this, you guys. As you guys can also see how excited I am, I'm wearing my Demon in the Woods unauthorized t-shirt. Unauthorized t-shirt. I cannot wait for this series, you guys. Okay, so I figured what we would do, y'all know me, I talk too damn much. What we're gonna go ahead and do, let's just do a trailer react. I've already watched the trailer upwards of like four or five times. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I have screamed each time, so I'm still so excited to watch it. And then afterwards, let's also look at some stills. They So I thought we'd take a look at those because I think we're gonna see Nina in those. We're gonna see some more Genya in those. It's pronounced Genya, not Genya. We're gonna see some Genya. And I'm just really excited to like really go through now, I'm not going to be nitpicky on this. There are people already out there. You can find them on Reddit. You can find them somewhere in the Grishaverse, like actually breaking everything down, like frame by frame by frame. I'm just going to go through and be a real excited hoe. Okay, that's me, a real excited hoe. Before we get started, as always, please like, subscribe. And I actually had a question for you guys. This is such a silly question. This is not Harry Potter. I know there is no sorting hat. But if you guys could be a Grisha, which one would you be? I already said I'm a heart render, okay? I, I'm a kill bitches. I'm a kill folk everywhere. There's so much anger in me. It needs to be released. But if you guys could be any one of the Grisha, which one would you be? Let me know in the comments. Let me know why you think you would fit in with that group of Grisha. Okay, y'all. I'm so excited about this. Y'all ready for this? Y'all ready for this? Y'all ready for this? Y'all ready for this? Okay. One, two, three, start. God, you guys, I'm so excited. The fucking shadow fall. Like, isn't it amazing to actually see it in person? And not just on the map, right? Oh, God. I'm so excited about her as Alina. We're going to talk about Mal. Yes. And now we're watching the skiff go into the shadow fold. Oh, you need more than a miracle, darkling. You need more than a miracle. Okay. Guys. Mal. I think this is Alexi, right? Oh, and we got a ah! And they look so good. Our some summoner. So who actually saw what happened? <sighs> I love seeing them in their keptas. Look at this black kepta. Ben Barnes! Fuck! Oh god. Ooh, the Darkling. Oh, I'm so excited to talk about him. Yeah. So she's going to basically what? 
As you can tell, I'm extraordinarily excited about this. I am so excited because for those of you guys that have never read the books, like you have in your mind what you think the shadow fold is gonna look like. You have in your mind what you think the Volcra are gonna look like. And just being able to see just how expansive it is and how terrifying it actually is. Cause you know, in my head sometimes, my head just be like, oh, it's like a little black dust storm. <laughs> to actually see it divide Ravka like that is so fucking incredible. I'm so excited. I'm not gonna be super duper duper in depth on what we just saw. I think there will be other videos out there that are doing that far better than I ever will. And I also think that um, there's gonna be another trailer. This is the teaser trailer. There will absolutely be another trailer where we're actually, I think, gonna get more dialogue, more of the story breakdown. We need some more story breakdown. So I am gonna like leave it for later, but let's just talk about a few things we saw in the trailer. A few things in there that I went to Reddit and actually was like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. I did miss that. So let's talk about that real quick. Okay, the very, very, very last shot, I believe of the entire trailer, we actually have Zoya in the background. Um, I'm starting from the end of the trailer because let's just talk about it. Zoya is there. Oh, for those of you guys that don't know, Zoya is a complete bitch with a heart of gold. I she is a bitch. B I C T H. I fucking love her. I mean, she also has a heart of black. Like, she'll kill you in a second, but she also loves her friends. And when it comes down to it, she is a ride or die bitch. She is that ride or die bitch. So is Jenya, who we also see in the trailer, who looks gorgeous. The actress playing her is absolutely beautiful, which is exactly the way Jenya should look. Okay, guys, uh, this one blew my mind. Someone actually did like a freeze frame of when they're going through the shadow fold. Now, this could be at any different point in the season. They go through the shadow fold more than once, but there's a paused like frame that someone took a picture of. I'm going to see if I can find it and put it on the screen somewhere. Y'all will see it. Jesper is on a skiff. <laughs> from Six of Crows is on a skiff going through the shadow fold. So you guys, yes. So for those of us that are like, how are they going to change this story? Oh, they are for sure changing it quite a bit. I mean, if we're going to see our Six of Crows, our dregs, our people, like actually interacting with Alina and the Darkling, and now I can't breathe. I am so excited. We also see a scene of Inesh kind of sliding down a rope into a home. A lot of people think that is when the Six of Crows actually steal uh, Jan Van X decapel painting, if y'all remember. That happened before the events of Six of Crows. So a lot of people think what we're seeing there is them actually stealing that painting from his house. I am so stoked y'all to see kind of the events that happened before Six of Crows. I love this group. I cannot tell you how much I love the group of people. Um, I love Kaz. I love Inesh. I love Jesper. I love Wyland. I love Nina. I love Matthias. I even love Kawhi. 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 And I love all of them. So I can't Oh, I can't wait. I know that like Nina is only in there for a little bit and I think Matthias is only in IMDb in like one episode so far. That may be a fake out. He may be there for a little bit more. We don't know, but I cannot wait. If you guys watched on Friday, IGN FanFest had a the kind of the exclusive first look at this trailer and they also had a panel with the cast, basically Lee Bardugo and also the showrunner. It's actually really fantastic and it's not that long. It was like 30 minutes long. I went to work, got a cup of coffee and I watched it while I was there. <laughs> I told my boss, I was like, listen, I gotta watch this shit for my YouTube channel and for my life. And he was like, I feel you, I feel you, I feel you. But one of the things that did come up, Lee Bardugo does talk about the fact that there are definitely changes. She hedged on it a little bit. It sounded like she's a little vague on it, but she definitely talked about how, you know, she was in the writer's room. She is an executive producer. And she did talk about the fact that, um, you know, whenever she thought it was too big of a change that would change the story or the character too much, she did speak up. 
But that being said, she did say, I hope the fans kind of enjoy what we did. So what do you mean by that? We are going to see changes. I honestly think, though, most of the changes will probably come from the fact that we now have Six of Crows. Probably um, their timeline is going to be completely different. Those of you that have never read the books, by the way, go read the books. Please read the books. The books are fantastic, and I bet the show is going to be too, but the books are actually very, very, very good. For those of you that don't know, Six of Crows takes place after the events that take place in Shadow and Bone. Like, fully after the events of Shadow and Bone. They do not overlap, really. So... For the show's purposes, I have a feeling they're going to move up quite a bit of the events from Six of Crows and kind of like, kind of make it overlap a little bit more. And it, that's probably where we're going to see the most changes. And especially if we're seeing Jesper going across the shadow fold, what the hell are these people doing to Ravka? I'd love to know. I would love to know. I would love to see it. So we are going to see quite a bit of changes. Now, I don't think I have a problem with that. I literally, I, I love the group from Six of Crows, right? And they have such chemistry. I just think as long as the actors have chemistry and whatever they're doing, I'm going to be fine with the different storylines. Okay, I ramble that y'all. So like, let's just take a quick look at some of the stills that they also released along with the trailer. Obviously, this first picture, we already saw this in the trailer. It is them speeding towards the shadow fold. I love it. I love it. Another picture of the shadow fold. We get it. Okay, this to me has to be when they're presenting her to the court, right? Like, they've got to be in the big palace. We've got the Darkling, who I'm going to talk about in a little bit, wearing his black kefta. I, oh, guys, I tried to find a kefta to wear for these reviews. Couldn't find one that was under, like, hundreds of fucking dollars. Russian coats are expensive. If y'all know where I can find a cheap Russian coat, let me know, okay? Oh, oh my baby. They are perfect. I'm going to very specifically talk about Kaz, Inesh, and Jesper. Perfect. Look at this picture. Would you have wanted anything different? Like, I would love to know, would you have wanted anything different? There's like a few things I could change here and there, but the essence, they are so fulfilling who I thought these characters were going to be. I am so incredibly happy about this. Got another picture of Alina. She's in the army, being a cartographer, you know, making some maps. This is obviously, this has to be at the beginning, right? I can't quite tell. If she'd be wearing a kefta or something different, I think, if she was going through the fold. So let's just pretend this is towards the beginning of the show. Jinya! Jinya! So her name is pronounced Jinya. I was calling her Ginya for the longest time. It is pronounced Jinya. This is a gorgeous shot. She looks absolutely beautiful. And that's the thing. She is supposed to be stunning, gorgeous. She's a tailor. For those of you that don't know, a tailor is uh, basically in the, I think, the cor corporeal key. Right? Kaporioki? I think that is the one. And instead of being a heart render or a healer, heart renders killers, healers, healers, she's a tailor. She fixes your face. She's a plastic surgeon with legs. That was dumb. All plastic surgeons have legs. Let me figure this shit out. The plastic surgeon with magic. The fuck? Why couldn't I just say that in the first place? She looks beautiful. I love her kefta. I'm not even sure if that's... Yes, in the book, she did wear white, which is the color of servants. And hopefully they will go into why she had to wear white and what her whole purpose is here in the story. But I think this actress in this still in particular looks absolutely beautiful. And that is what I would have wanted for this character. Y'all, this is Nina. This is our girl, Nina. If you've read Six of Crows, Nina is just such... A firecracker. I love her so incredibly much. I did see a few fans be a little upset because she's not full figured. I think some people read the books and because she's so often described as being incredibly curvy, you know, just having curves for days, she and Matthias are described as being the biggest of the people within their group. Um, so I saw some people be like, this would have been an amazing opportunity to have a more full figured actress playing this role. You know what, guys? I agree with you. Why not? Let's do diversity all the way. Let's have some plus size ladies up in this bitch, all right? My size 12 hips would have loved that. But um, I'm really excited about whatever they're going to do because Nina is an amazing character. Boys, I don't even have anything to say. Look at them. Look at Kaz Brecker's face. That is the Kaz Brecker we wanted. We want someone with cheekbones that would literally kill somebody. He doesn't even have to raise his cane. He going to kill you first with his cheekbones. Obviously, this is actually a scene, I think it's from the trailer, where Alina is brought into the Darkling's tent for the first time, and he's going to ask her basically, like, what the fuck happened in the fold? And she's going to be like, mm, I don't know. And he's going to be like, come here. You got power, bitch. 
And then there's just an incredibly like dramatic shot. Does this not kind of look like it's taking place in space? This looks like it would also be a really good poster for like Stargate. You know what I mean? Like any number of sci-fi shows could have this incredibly generic looking as picture. But am I basic? Yes. So do I love it? 110%. And we have our picture of Mal. Now, I'm gonna talk about Mal a little bit. I'm gonna go through the characters a little bit because I do wanna talk about like my perceptions of Mal versus the Mal that we're getting and how I'm more excited for the Mal that we're getting. But yeah, here's a little baby Mal. I know if a lot of y'all hate Mal. I don't know what he did to you besides be boring. That's probably why y'all hate his ass. And Mal is fine. If you guys find any more stills or any more information, please let me know. I'm so excited by that. I felt incredibly lucky to find a community of people when I was doing my Bridgerton reviews who were constantly like, hey, Miata, here, you know, word on the street is this is happening. Word on the street is this happening. So if y'all hear some word on the street, <laughs> I'm a hoe on the street. Let this hoe know what's going on. <laughs> Thank you. So when I got my little, uh, I like big books and I cannot lie mug, and let's just go through the characters very quickly. We're not gonna get full thoughts. Hopefully I can save that for the final trailer, but let's just give like kind of like very quick initial thoughts of everyone that we're seeing in the trailer. Let's just do quick initial thoughts of like the first 10 people on what on IMDb. <laughs> I'm not even gonna go through the trailer again. Let's just go through the cast list on IMDb. So for y'all, pull up your IMDb and let's look at the like first 10, 20 people on IMDb, and let's just talk about them real quick, okay? Okay, let us start with Ben Barnes, who is playing General Kerrigan. Bitch, you the Darkling, okay? We're not gonna lie to each other like that. We can also call you by your first name, but let's save that for a little bit later when we get a little bit more into that. <laughs> ben Barnes is the Darkling. Guys, were you surprised by this? Now, for me, because I had not been keeping up with casting news, I was shocked by this because when I imagine the Darkling, I fully imagine him as like looking like 23, 24, 25 years old. Um, ben Barnes is a man. He's a man, man. Like he, he, he's a man. You know what I mean? Like man, like I smell him and I just smell like man, man, man. Which I'm actually incredibly excited about because if y'all notice, most of this cast is very young. It's based on YA. And I do not feel comfortable lusting after such young people. So for me, y'all are gonna see all of my horniness on display for Ben Barnes, the Darkling, and who's ever playing Nikolai. I don't know who's playing Nikolai, but Nikolai is, when I tell you, I know I shouldn't ship Alina and Nikolai. And I don't. I ship me and Nikolai. Because that's, I want to be the queen of Ravka. I'm going to rock his world, okay? I'll help him with trade. I will help you, Nikolai. Like, what you need. I got you, okay? You want me to be like a an extra on your ships as a privateer? Nikolai, let me. Let me. Let me. Let me. Lick me. Lick me. Love me. Love me. Call me and say me. I love you. Marry me right now or I'm dying. I said, marry me right now. Freddie Carter as Kazbrecker. Excellent. I have no notes. I have no notes. Um, obviously, I will have more notes. Hopefully, we will see more of him talking in the second trailer. Um, but from just pure looks, no notes. No, 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 at all. I couldn't have imagined Kazbrecker was going to have cheekbones like that. That is phenomenal. Um, he looks uh, fucking great. And um, if he can hold his own as Kaz, if he can be the scariest motherfucker on the streets, because he is, he's like 17 and the scariest person in Ketterdam, then I am 110% there for him. So I'm excited about this casting. Like, I think he looks great. Jesse May Lee as Alina Starkov. So again, I am so excited about this. And what's so exciting is, again, that she is a half Chinese actress playing this role. If you guys watch the IGN Fan Fest panel, which again, go and watch it, she talks a little bit about her getting the part. I believe a fan asked them about how important it was to kind of see themselves on screen and see diverse characters on screen. And what was so interesting is she mentioned the fact that when she first got the audition, she didn't understand why she got the audition. Because when she looked at all of the people, um, kind of all of the images out there of Alina, Alina was always white, always white, always white. And she was just like, why are they bringing me in? Are they thinking of doing colorblind casting? I don't know. And instead, no, they didn't. They actually wrote this character to be, I believe, a half Chinese character, which is phenomenal. It is so much better than colorblind casting when you actually say, no, we actually meant for this character to be 
just like you. How wonderful is that? So I am just so excited for her. I'm so excited that the showrunners and Lee took the time to actually say, no, we want this character to be just like you, Jessie. I think that's incredibly important. I hope Jessie kills it. Um, she seems so sweet and kind and funny when you listen to her when she speaks in real life. So I'm just hoping she kind of brings like that energy and that personality to Alina. Archie Renault as Mal shocked. The first time I saw a picture of Archie as Mal, I went, this doesn't make any sense to me. Mm, I don't get it. I don't get it. For some reason in my head, he just kind of looked like a bigger, bulkier man. Like he, he's still 17, but like he looks like a 17 year old that plays like rugby, you know, like a 17 year old that plays American football. It just, I couldn't understand. He always just seemed like a bigger guy. In the books, he gets into fights when he's like drinking too much or going through some shit or angsting after Alina. So he, in my head, was big enough to take on those people. However, after watching, again, the panel that was on Friday from IGN FanFest, I think that this character, this Mal, is gonna have so much more charm and like so much more charisma than what we got in the books. So I'm totally willing to sacrifice my idea for what he looked like in the books to actually have a Mal that actually has like that charming and that wit and has some real chemistry with Alina. I think what ended up happening in the books, all of the chemistry between Alina and Mal happened before the beginning of Shadow and Bone. So I don't think we ever really got to see like why she was so in love with him other than the fact that like they were drawn to each other, right? So something about him is so like, he has this like spark in his eye, like a little sparkle and he seemed very charming. So I, I kind of am excited about his energy being brought to Mal because that's the kind of Mal that you're like, oh, no wonder people want to be around you. I get it. So I'm just excited to see what he does because again, based purely on looks, I didn't understand. Based on personality, I think I get it. Amita Suman as Inesh. Guys, we won. We won. I just finished rereading Crooked Kingdom. And if you guys have just like, again, if you've read these books, the angst, the pure angst that is happening between Kaz and Inesh, it drives you insane. It makes you explode. You just are like so overwhelmed. And I'm just, again, I'm so excited by her casting and Freddie's casting. I am just, I'm blown away. And also the fact that we have two South Asian women in this show. Let's give it up. Thank you, Lee, for writing characters that come from all over the place. Thank you, Netflix. Thank you, the casting. Thank you, showrunner. I'm, I'm so excited about this. Kit Young as Jesper. Real quick, Kit, if you're watching, I know you're not, get your picture on IMDb. It is $200 a year. I pay for the subscription. Put your picture up there. Okay, back to it. This one was like, I'm happy on one hand, and then happy on the other hand, and then just have like a little criticism on the other hand. The energy that Kit is bringing to Jesper, just based on this like little teaser trailer, is 110% perfect. The little wink that he gives him, shooting that coin in the air. I mean, absolutely, that is what we want from Jesper. Jesper, to me, is a character that I'm like, he has to have all of the charm. Y'all, again, read the books. Jesper has all of the charm, all of the charisma, all of the jokes. Whenever there is a tense situation, he is the one that is gonna break up that tension. He is so needed within this group. Um, again, in the panel from Friday, Kit mentioned that he got hired two weeks before they started filming. It's one of the very last editions. You know what this tells us? This was a fucking hard part to fill. They had to find someone who was lanky, who moved his body with like kind of a interesting lanky ease, but more than that had the personality that like everyone would want to be around this person. He cracks jokes all the time, but he has so much heart, so much love to give, and also an insecurity that is there. So it is so imperative to get this character right. And so I'm guessing that he has to actually be amazing, right? If it took them up until two weeks before they started filming to find the right character, yeah, yeah, yeah. They wanted to find exactly the right thing. So I think Kit must be an amazing actor. He's probably an amazing Jesper. The only thing, and you guys know, I talked about this a lot in Bridgerton, in the book, very specifically, Jesper's skin is mentioned as being a deep brown. I am a deep brown. I'm a deep brown. This is deep brown. Now, I know deep brown sometimes means different things to, to white people. Sometimes white people be like, oh my God, he was so brown. And he's like literally the color of like my carpet. Like he, he's literally the color of just like alabaster. And they're like, whoa, look at that brown skin. So I get it. But he is mentioned as being like deep brown skinned. Now he is biracial. 
He is biracial. His dad is Kalish. Um, that's kind of like Gaelic people. They all have red hair. They all remind me of either being from Scotland or from Ireland. And his mom is from Zemini, which is basically the black people country. <laughs> to be honest, the black people country. He is biracial and Kit is also light skinned and I'm gonna assume is also biracial. I'm just gonna make that assumption. But because he was mentioned so often as having like a deep skin tone, I think I was a little like, oh, oh, okay. That's what Desper looks like. Netflix also has a really bad habit of um, adapting things and then everyone who is black is uh, biracial or very light skinned. If you watch my Bridgerton videos, then you know that they did that quite a bit. This to me almost is a non-starter. It's not anything I think to get really ruffled about. Again, Jasper is supposed to be biracial. Um, and I do think that this actor is gonna bring it in terms of personality. God, please bring it in terms of personality. Oh, so, you know what? We gonna let that shit go. That's not even a big thing. Moving on. We talked a little bit about Jinya. The girl is gorgeous. Happy about her. Zoya, also beautiful. Not much to say yet. I would love to hear some of these people speak in the actual trailer um, versus kind of this voiceover that we got from the Darkling. I also mentioned Nina. The actress looks great. Guys, I don't know what to say though because we don't know anything about them. So I'm trepidatious, but I'm excited about kind of these actors' ability to really inhabit these characters. Real quick, this is really far down. You've got to scroll a little bit, but uh, the actor who's playing David is too hot. Like this man is gorgeous. I never imagined David being hot. Um, I love that they're gonna like put some glasses on a really hot man and just be like, I'm a nerd. <laughs> he's just, he's too attractive, but I'm kind of excited to watch a hot nerd and Jen yeah, flirt. I mean, Jenny will be flirting with him and he'll be ignoring her, but I can't wait to see that. And then finally, guys, we have Matthias who only shows up in one episode, they're saying, which would be really strange because Nina is in five of the episodes. So we may be able to go ahead and uh, deduce that either um, they're lying and he's going to show up in more episodes or the show is really not going to go through any of the stuff with Matthias until like maybe towards the very, very last episode where maybe like the group is like, yeah, let's, let's do this. Let's go and get him. So we're going to see what we're going to see. Okay, guys, that is it for right now. I know I was going to do this in 13 minutes and I am probably over that. Am I over that? Not, not if I'm over that. Fuck. Okay. But I, again, I am so excited. I am so tired. It's like 10 o'clock at night, but I'm so fucking excited for this series. Um, and I've already been recommending the book to like my whole family. I'm like, y'all, I think you're gonna love the show. Please read the books because they're so, so good. So you guys get your friends to read these books. They're actually great. They're, there's nothing embarrassing about them. Like I was, you know, recommending Bridgerton and that shit has some sex and some blowjobs and some shit in it. And so go ahead, recommend these to your friends, your family. Let's get everyone on board and super excited for this series, which by the way, just looks beautiful. It looks like they spent money on this shit, okay? Again, before you go, like, subscribe, thumbs up. And again, let me know your resources. If you guys are finding out some like deep, dark secrets about the show, let me know your resources. Put it below, talk to me. Bye my lovelies, I'll see you next time.